I'm super jazzed that we're all here at RPK Online together. I was just tapping out to some of my new beats. That's how excited I am to be here with you today. We have a jam-packed day planned as we continue to talk about cooperation. Let's read what cooperation is all about. And then I have an idea. We are gonna have a three-second air guitar jam session. Here we go. Cooperation is working together to do more than you can do alone. Ready? That was really embarrassing. I'm sure your guitar sounded so much better than mine. All right, I love it. Now, I've got a question for you before we get started with our story. Have you ever had to stay home from school because you were sick? Raise your hand if you have. I bet it's a lot of you. Being sick is no fun. And I'm sure glad that we have doctors and nurses who can help us when we're sick. They can run tests and they give us medicine to help us feel better. Well, during the time of Jesus, things were a lot different then. Most people would have to walk miles to see a doctor. And then sometimes the doctor wouldn't even be able to help them. When Jesus began to teach and heal people, things changed. And suddenly there was someone who could really help people who were sick and who were hurting. Well, today we're looking at a story of someone who needed help. And this man wasn't just sick with the flu, this man couldn't walk. And when Jesus showed up in town, this man desperately hoped that he could see Jesus for himself. We'll hear all about that in just a minute, but before we get into more of that, let's watch this and then we're gonna worship together. I'm Lawson, and today I'm making a special unjarring video just for you. My favorite spicy dill pickles are now available in Cheeto flavor. You're about to witness the making of Snack Time History. Of Snack Time History. In one second. Hold that thought. Mommy! In the meantime, I've got an amazing story for you from this girl, Scarlett, who's friends with my little sister. Now, Scarlett's mom has this big work thing she has to go to all day, even though it's Saturday. She tells Scarlett and her brother and sister that she wants them to clean the whole house while I'm gone. And they're like, no! And mom says, I'm raising you to be responsible adults. And adds that when she gets home at five, they'll all go out for pizza and ice cream. And they're like, yes. And as soon as mom leaves, Ray takes charge of the list. And she says that while they clean, they're going to listen to musical theater. And Liam and Scarlett say, no way. Cause Liam wants to listen to bluegrass. Then Scarlett and Ray protest it because it makes their ears wanna bleed. And then Scarlett tries to suggest disco. And Ray yells, stop. And says they're just gonna split up and each clean one area. Liam gets the bathrooms. Ray will take the kitchen. And Scarlett gets the family room. Scarlett doesn't even know where to start on her own. So she picks up a pack of cards and she's like, hey, I could play solitaire. Cause she's got all day, like all day. And a few hours later, Scarlett checks on Ray and Liam, and it looks like they can't get started either. So Scarlett checks the time and realizes <gasps> it's nearly four. So she calls an emergency family meeting 
Scarlet says there's no way to finish before Mom gets home unless we work together. And they shout, go team clean. And then they put on some disco, bluegrass, musical theater, and all pitch in together. And when Mom gets home at five, the whole house is sparkling clean. And Mom's so impressed that for dinner she orders ice cream pizza. So kids, always remember that pizza is the new dessert and that cooperation is working together to do more than you can do alone. Maybe pizza isn't the new dessert. Mommy! Hey, thanks. No problem. Ooh. Chalk one up for cooperation. See you guys next time. Hi, RPK. Our basic truth this week is I should treat others the way I want to be treated. And all this month, as we're talking about cooperation, we've been singing this song, Love Like You. So get up on your feet. Let's do it again. Come on. Awesome job, you guys. Okay, our bottom line today is work together to help someone in need. Now, the Bible says that God gives us comfort so that we can give comfort to those who need it. What a great way to help someone who's in need. Let's sing, He Comforts Us today. been time.
times that my heart was sad. Come on now. There have been times my heart was sad. Father, thank you so much that you give us comfort in those times of desperate need and that you use us to comfort other people around us when they need it. What an incredible gift for us to be able to help someone else, to use our gifts and work together to help someone in need. God, would you Show us that person this week who is in need that we need to just put ourselves aside and stop worrying about our things and work to help them do whatever we can. Thank you that whether we're five or 50, you've given us exactly what we need to help others. We don't have to be grown ups. Even kids can help other people when they're in need. So show us that today, this week. Thank you, God. And today we just pray in your amazing son's name. Amen. What's up, everyone? I'm Haley, and nothing cheers me up like a good sing along. Sing-alongs work a lot better when you're not the only one in the room. Sorry, Lauren. 
They really require cooperation. Cooperation is working together to do more than you can do alone. Sing-alongs bring people together. They make people happy and they can make the world a better place. I love it when musicians get together for a sing-along to help raise money for other people. This one's for the children. There was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was his name. Oh, B I N G O B I N G O B I N G O. You see, different people with different talents all coming together with the same goal to help people in need. That's major cooperation. Today's story is about a person who was in need and the friends who worked together to help him. Maybe my musician friends can help me with my sing-along. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Life is but a dream. Life is but a dream. Much better together. I'll see you soon. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, Chapter 5, verses 17 through 26. Imagine living in Judea 2,000 years ago. If you got sick, there were very few doctors. If you couldn't see or hear or walk, there was no one you could turn to for help. Please, help me. But when Jesus began to travel and teach and heal, suddenly there was hope. A way to get better and start life all over again. Stories of Jesus reached a man in Capernaum who couldn't walk and his four friends. Let's call them Leo, Mike, Raph, and Donnie. Jesus is in town, right here in Capernaum, over at Joe's house. Ginormous crowd, dude. The man who couldn't walk tried hard not to get his hopes up. I can't even get there, much less fight my way through a crowd. You don't have to, because we got you. Ready? Dude, one two, three, lift! The four friends each grabbed the corner of the man's mat. Together, they carried him out of the house and down the dusty road. Soon, they could hear the sounds of a large crowd. There's Joe's place, oh yeah. What's happening? People jammed in 20 deep around the door. We got religious leaders, teachers, poor people, rich people, standing room only. Actually, there's no standing room, dude. Only room is up. Sure enough, around the back of the house, the four friends discovered a narrow staircase up to the flat roof. Wait, how is this any better? And down, dudes. Hold it. We can't even hear Jesus. Oh, we can't hear him yet. That's about to change. Help me pry up this clay. It's time to raise the roof. Within minutes, the four friends pried up large sections of packed clay to reveal a rough thatch of sticks connecting the roof beams. <laughs> Gotta bust these out. And voila! As dust and beams of sunlight spilled into the room, the four friends could see the shocked crowd gaping up at them. The only one who didn't seem shocked was the man at the front, watching them with deep, kind eyes. Jesus! Hey, all y'all people down there, get ready, because our friend is coming through. The four friends each grabbed the corner of the mat and began to lower their friend into the rough hole they had created. Hey, what's going on? Hey, wait. You can't do this. What is this? Hold on. In spite of the confusion, the man who couldn't walk was finally lowered to the floor, right in front of Jesus. The nerve. Just look at all this damage. Jesus wasn't looking at the damage or the shocked crowd. His eyes went from the man on the floor to the four faces peering through the hole in the roof. In their eyes, he'd read what they'd done 
and how certain they were that he could heal their friend. He saw their faith. Then, Jesus smiled at the man on the floor. Friend, your sins are forgiven. <laughs> the religious leaders didn't dare speak their thoughts aloud, but inside their heads, they were nearly screaming. Who is this fellow to say such an evil thing? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus could tell exactly what was going on in their heads and hearts. Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Is it easier to say, your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up and walk? He wouldn't dare. Well, at least everyone will see he's a fraud. Jesus had God's power to meet the greatest need of the man who couldn't walk by forgiving his sins. But that wasn't something the religious leaders could see. So Jesus gave them something they could see. I want you to know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Jesus looked down again at the man on the mat, right into his eyes. Get up, take your mat and go home. It seemed that everyone, from the four friends on the roof to the people jammed in the doorways and windows, was holding their breath. The man who couldn't walk sat up. Then he stumbled to his feet. His friends cheered. Oh, you got this! Deep breath. Baby steps. Bring it, dude. The man took a step, a hop, a leap. I, I can walk. I can walk. Praise God. The man grabbed his mat and danced out of the house to meet his friends for a group hug. The crowd was amazed and filled with wonder. Most unusual thing I've seen in all my years. Well, praise God. Praise God. Through the power of God and the help of a few friends, the man who once couldn't walk now ran home on his own two feet. His life forever changed. Whenever Jesus was in town, people hurried to see him. The word was that Jesus could miraculously heal people. So the man who couldn't walk needed help to get to Jesus. And his friends went above and beyond to make that happen. They saw a need and they worked together to do something about it. And don't miss this, don't miss this. Jesus saw that the man had a different kind of need. It's the same need that all of us have. The man needed to be forgiven of his sins. He got the miraculous healing he was looking for, plus he was forgiven. You and I can have that same forgiveness because of what Jesus did on the cross. So there are needs all around us, in our homes, in our schools, in our communities, even the world. And you can do something about it, but you don't have to do it alone, right? Mm -hmm. India Bingo! You can work together with others. Maybe you can form a team to help clean up your park or help out in your neighborhood. Maybe you could put on a show to help raise money for people in need in your own community or in other countries. Sometimes needs seem too big to tackle alone. So why not work together? That's the one thing to remember today. Work together to help someone in need. Ask God to help you see the needs all around you. And together, we can make the world a better place. I'll see you next time. Rock on, people! Y'all come back now, you hear? Like, bye! <laughs> what they said. In today's story, a group of friends were determined to help someone in need, no matter how difficult it became. They never gave up. They worked together to help their friend get to Jesus. And because of their cooperation, Jesus healed their friend, and the man was able to walk. As followers of Jesus, we should treat others the way that we want to be treated. And that's exactly what this man's friends did. They saw someone in need, and they worked together to do something to help. And that's our bottom line today. Work together to help someone in need. 
I bet the men in this story were just amazed when they saw how Jesus treated their friend. It was easy for them to see what their friend needed. But sometimes it isn't quite that simple for us. Sometimes what our friends need is more hidden and harder to see. Maybe your friend needs someone to listen because they're going through a tough time. Or maybe your teacher needs a note that says, I'm so glad I'm in your class. Or maybe your sibling needs to hear that you love them. We can ask God to help us see the needs of the people around us, whether that's at home, at school, or in our neighborhood. So let's look at our memory verse this month. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Ecclesiastes 4, 9. Let's say it together. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Ecclesiastes 4, 9. Let's pray and ask God to help us do just that. God, it is amazing to see these men help their friend. They knew your power, and they knew you could heal them, and they did everything they could. They cooperated to get their friend to you. Would you help us be like these men? Would you help us see the needs of others and help us work together, cooperate together to meet others' needs and make them better, make this world a better place? We love you so much, and we pray these things in your son's name. Amen. Well, it was great to be here today. Have a great Sunday, and we'll see you next time. Bye.